Hello, everybody. It's uh, 7 o'clock and we can start this meeting. Um, my name is Richard Silliman. I'm the chair of the Board of Zoning Appeals. I'll let the rest of the board introduce themselves. Dave Newhart. Amy Aker. You like Hurwitz? And I'm Richard Zoff. I'm not a member of the board, but I'm the zoning inspector, so that's why I'm sitting up here. And we also have Jennifer Huber representing the board in the room. Um, the way we've been doing these hearings is basically the people that are making the appeal will go first and take their case. So is somebody speaking for you guys? Or you? We all are. We all are. <laughs> Who would like to start? I can start us off. Sounds great. Okay, thanks. Um, you don't have to swear the attorney, and there's a sort of like he's always sworn in because for virtue of his license, right. but if the other, the other applicants want to, uh, or appellants want to be sworn in, they should be sworn in. Okay, well, I'll have, can you swear them in? I can. Thank you. After the attorney. We can do that. All right. And can you go to the podium so we can catch on the camera? Well, actually, Richard, do you want to yes, read? Would you like me to read the application? Yes. Oh. <clears throat> Mr. Zoff, thank you for taking the time to review and consider our application to conduct agritourism activities on our property located at 4000 Kyle Road in Miami Township. Our planning and practice for these activities have been a mindful process while considering the stewardship of the land, surrounding nature, and the community while remaining devoted to the local regulations and Miami Township land use plan. We purchased this property with the intent to grow into a retreat for family and friends to enjoy recreational activity, agricultural practices, and develop tradition. Living only a quarter mile down the road on a mini farm, our long-term plan is to connect the two properties, offering a multitude of agricultural opportunities for family, friends, and our community. Prior to the property entering the real estate market in 2019, we were growing concerned with the amount of development in our area and our road alone. We always walked by this property before owning it, discussing the untapped potential for the land to be reformed back to its agricultural uses and utilized for more than just deer hunting and the yard to breed them. <laughs> After purchasing the property in the winter 2019, we worked diligently to research and formulate a plan to preserve the property while looking at the long-term goals for our family and the community. We engaged a professional to develop a forestry management plan, which has allowed us to just to, which has allowed us to strategically plan and manage the eradication of invasive species, sowing of more native plants, maintenance of existing trails and drives, with the addition of new clearings for better access and efficiency on the property, and target timber control and production. The property became unkempt by the previous owner, leaving heavy fallen timber, overgrowth of weeds and invasive plants, and dammed up streams, prohibiting runoff on the property. As our interests closely align with the Miami Township Comprehensive Use Plan, our goals are to contribute to the preservation of agricultural land through low impact and sustainable practices. Since we took ownership of the property, we have dedicated our efforts to maintain the forestry management plan and develop new agricultural initiatives. During the pandemic, we realized that there was more to offer our family and friends and the community while spending time on the land foraging morels. We have had friends come to stay at the property to search for morel mushrooms ever since we owned the property. Kelly and our daughters collect blackberries and mint for cooking. The land has provided us educational, recreational, and harvesting opportunities that are invaluable for our family and those who spend any amount of time connected to the land. Summary of what we are requesting to do. We are working towards our end goal of having a rentable cabin on the property with the theme of a culinary cabin, which will allow immersive farm stays to individuals. We would also use the cabin for agriculturally pertinent educational opportunities, highlighting local foods. As a pediatric dietitian, it is of the utmost importance to have this offering available to the community, especially the community's youth. 
We will highlight local foods, including on-premise gardens, private and community, foraging activities, you pick events, a sugar shack, chickens, goats, and other pertinent livestock on site within the 25 acres. The property is flanked by an organic meat farm and our farm across the street as well. Thank you for your time and consideration. Sincerely, Carrie, Kelly Langine Patron and Brandon Patron. Okay. This application letter came to me and I responded to it, um, the, the proposal, negatively. I, I denied the application for agritourism because in my review of Ag Ohio agritourism law, it, the agritourism has to take place on a farm and the uh, property meets the definition of farm, but it has to be a farm devoted to agricultural production. And I did not, wasn't provided with or could I deduce from, from aerial photographs or the forest management plan that there was agricultural production taking place. Um, and consequently, I denied the application. It is your job tonight to decide whether that was a correct decision on my part or not. If you find that um, my um, evaluation was incorrect, then you need to move on to, as a, as a courtesy to the Patrons, determining whether their proposed activities qualify as agritourism. Are you done, Richard? Yeah. Anybody have any questions? I want to mention one other thing. There's another hearing after this one, too. This is two separate hearings. Okay, you can go ahead. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Let me see the class here for a second. <laughs> during the presentation. But you have a copy for you too. All right, it'll, it'll go into the files. All right. Well, you notice that we have trouble keeping that door open. Oh. <laughs> That's all right. Okay. Uh, no microphone, so hopefully everyone can hear me. Um, good evening, members of the BTA. My name is Dave Montgomery. I am with Pickle Schaefer and Evelyn in Dayton, Ohio. Uh, I'm an attorney. Uh, I am here with Kelly and Brandon Patron uh, in regards to the application that Mr. Zoff read uh, into the record. Just for everyone's edification, um, I just handed out an exhibit packet that consists of 11 exhibits, uh, all of which relate to both the agricultural use of the property uh, and also the property itself meeting the definition uh, of a farm. So it's my understanding uh, that will be submitted into the record. Uh, I think that you guys have received a portion of this perhaps prior to the meeting, um, at least as it relates to Exhibit 7, or, oh, I'm sorry, Exhibit 11, uh, which is a more detailed description of what's taking place or what's proposed to be taking place at, at the Patron uh, farm. So with all that being said, uh, as Mr. Zoff pointed out, uh, an application was made for an agricultural use on a 25-acre piece of land uh, that is owned jointly by uh, Kelly and Brandon Patron. Uh, that property is agriculturally zoned. Um, Mr. Zoff made the determination that the property did not qualify as a farm, and as such, the not not a, No, it qualifies as a farm. It's not a productive farm. Okay, it qualifies as a farm. I was just reading the denial. So uh, it qualifies, I guess, as a farm, but not a productive farm. Um, I'm not sure that the denial application uh, indicated that level of specificity, but perhaps it did. Irrespective, uh, we will show you tonight uh, that it is a farm, it is a productive farm, uh, and as such, it does meet the threshold uh, for uh, a farm, um, which then triggers the uh, agricultural uh, activity, agricultural production, which in turn then triggers the uh, agro-tourism aspect uh, of the application. 
Um, from a procedural standpoint, uh, and I think maybe Mr. Zoff sort of addressed this on the, on, on the front end, when you read the denial, the denial says that it was specific to the property not being a farm, either a farm or a productive farm, okay. depending upon the verbiage of the actual denial. It so, says not qualify as a farm for the purposes of agritourism. Okay, so a farm for the purposes of agritourism. All right, so, so with that, uh, he also made a notation on there that indicates that the second par portion of the question, I guess, which is before you tonight, that relates to agro-tourism perhaps was embedded. Um, and, and, and I simply point this out because um, your zoning resolution really doesn't allow sort of this piecemeal step. I think, if I understand what Mr. Zoff said tonight, if we get over the first hurdle, which is showing that this is a farm for agro-tourism purposes, uh, we then will proceed with the agro-tourism aspect of the application, um, which is fine with us. Uh, we're prepared to do so. Um, if the board decides to bifurcate those two issues, uh, we do have some sort of objections to that, which we can get into. So, I mean, I guess, so everyone's on the same page. But I, was my first description correct, Richard, as to yeah, how you no, I, the case? As I say, I turned down the application for the reasons stated and didn't feel at that point until that was resolved it was it was appropriate to go into all the details on on the actual agritourism activities okay all right but the issues tonight are farm and then agro-tourism correct okay all right okay all right that's fine i just didn't want to get you guys with a bunch of information if it wasn't necessary all right so with all that being clarified um as indicated, uh, this is a 25-acre uh, piece of ground that is approximately four-tenths of a mile or less uh, from an active farm that the Patrons own. Um, as you will see in the exhibits that I handed out, items one and two uh, relate to property information from Greene County's uh, GIS website. It shows common ownership of the property, gives a general description of the property, uh, parcel ID number. Uh, it shows both the 25-acre parcel and then the two parcels, which comprise approximately the 9.2 plus or minus acre uh, farm, which includes the homestead and then the field next door, which is, uh, again, utilized for the agricultural activities. Uh, much of what we're going to talk about tonight, just kind of to lay it out for you, is uh, we're going to talk about the farming activities that take place. Um, you note that in the exhibits that I provided you, there are excerpts from both your zoning resolution and the Ohio Revised Code as to what constitutes agriculture under Ohio law, what constitutes agriculture under your zoning resolution, uh, in addition to what constitutes uh, agricultural production, uh, and then a farm, and then agro-tourism. So as we work our way through those definitions, because those are pertinent to exactly what's taking place, uh, I'm going to go through some of the technical stuff, and then I'm going to turn it over to the patrons who are going to sort of explain in greater detail as to what they're proposing uh, for the property, explain from their perspective how they got here tonight, uh, and then I'll have some concluding remarks at the end. So we will try to keep it shorter, because I know that you do have another hearing uh, after this one, um, but we do need to get some stuff onto the record as well. So again, we're talking about a 25-acre parcel that's located at 4000 Kyle Road. Uh, it is an agri agriculturally zoned uh, piece of property. And again, it's in immediate proximity uh, to the Patron's active farm. Uh, the two properties do work in conjunction with each other, although they are slightly separated by a small distance. Uh, and you will hear testimony tonight that talks about how the Patron's consider this to be an extension and an annex, if you will, uh, of the existing farm uh, operations. Uh, the property uh, is subject to CAUV, and for those of you that are familiar with that, as I would anticipate most of you are, uh, that is an agricultural uh, valuation exemption or reduction uh, that is established through Greene County. Uh, as part of that process, Greene County has to make a determination that the property is of an agricultural use. Uh, and you will see that uh, we have emails from two representatives from Greene County within the exhibit packet that I provided, uh, indicating that the property is subject to the CAUV uh, per county uh, qualifications from the auditor's office, uh, in addition, it makes reference to the forestry plan. 
Uh, as Mr. Zoff indicated, there is a forestry plan that is located, uh, or not located with, but established for this property. Uh, you have copies of that forestry plan within the exhibit packets that were provided to you. Uh, and with that, uh, that has been in existence since, I believe, 1996. This is also uh, mentioned in some of the emails from Greene County. Uh, and the property has consistently been on the CAUV exemption uh, since 1986. The current forestry plan is different than the one that was established in 1996. Correct. Yeah, that plan has to go through updates uh, periodically. You actually have two copies of the plan. You have the original plan uh, from 19, um, 2019 uh, when uh, the Patrons acquired the property. Uh, you then have an update to that plan, which was done earlier this year. Uh, and on the face of the plan, you will see that that's a valid plan through uh, 28, 2028. Uh, so with that, pretty much at all times during the Patron's ownership or immediately thereafter, uh, the forestry plan has been in place that is registered with the state. Uh, and again, that's alluded to on the information, or not even alluded to, that's directly stated on the information that you received from Greene County. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, you'll also hear testimony tonight about various uh, agricultural production, which takes place on that property. Uh, the Patrons will provide some testimony to you that talks about the sale of lumber, uh, that poultry and husbandry <coughs> takes place on that property. Uh, there is uh, um, a maple sap collection, which is used in the production of maple syrup. Uh, they have actually the maple syrup evaporator uh, on the 9.2 acre portion uh, of the farm, uh, but they use the trees that are on this property to collect that to then uh, use for the um, production of the lethal syrup. Uh, also included within the information that we've provided are sales receipts. Uh, those sales receipts show that timber uh, and some of the poultry meat has been sold at a commercial level. So there is commercial activity that is taking place on that property. Uh, this, of course, is just what's currently taking place uh, and there's a slew of activities as Richard, uh, Mr. Zoff alluded to, not alluded to, but spoke to uh, as part of the application, uh, which ties into the agro-tourism uh, aspect of what is uh, hopefully uh, going to transpire at that property. Um, so uh, much of uh, the vision, uh, if you will, uh, for the property uh, is set forth uh, in the uh, Patron Farm uh, pamphlet. I'll call it a pamphlet, although it's a 13 page document. But the pamphlet that was uh, sent to you guys in advance of the meeting, I don't know if you've had an opportunity to read that or not. We did include a packet of that, um, which is uh, exhibit number 11 uh, in the information that was submitted to you. Uh, what I would like to do at this point in time is have the Patrons come up, talk to you about sort of their journey and how they got here. Uh, they will talk to you in greater detail about the um, Patron Farm uh, agricultural use vision that they have for the property. And then I will circle back on the back end uh, and have some additional comments uh, and information for you. So with that, I'd like to turn it over to Calvin Brandon. Okay. Should we be smiling? Yes, please. Do you swear, test, swear or affirm that the testimony you're going to provide is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Brandon Patron. This is my wife, Kelly, and we're the owners of Patron Farms. I want to thank everybody for their time this evening, as well as your consideration regarding our appeal. A little history on the property and our current parcel uses. We purchased 4,000 Cal Road back in 2019, efforts to expand our current agricultural operations and pursue some additional agriculture related goals of ours that we just could not manage on our 9.2 acres. The primary location of Patron Farms is located at an adjacent property across the street at 4083 Kyle. The parcel is mostly wooded with an extensive trail system spanning over two acres throughout the property connecting a handful of large areas of green spaces where we focus our animal husbandry and plant production operations. The property has been on CEV dating back to 96 uh, with no laps in, uh, in active status and it's remained on CEV through the entirety of our ownership. Uh, we worked with a forestry consultant to develop a plan tailored to our goals 
and we've worked diligently to maintain those over the last four years. The reason for our appeals that we were denied a request for agri tours on the basis that property did not qualify as a farm. Property does qualify as a farm because we are in excess of 10 acres and we are producing agricultural um, agricultural sales through commercial timber, through maple syrup production, through meat chickens, and through natural dye uh, that's extracted for uh, linens and other uh, textile products that are sold. Mm -hmm. On the property for the current partial use, our goats help manage invasive species like honeysuckle, which is prevalent throughout. We sell timber harvested from the property to maintain the trail system and prevent fallen trees and provide safety from snags. We harvest maple sap for maple sugaring, forage for morels and other edible mushroom species, native wild growing berries and plants. The sap collected from the sugar maple trees is used for syrup production, which is evaporated at our farm and sold. We also raise seasonal meat birds, which are partially kept on the 25 acre farm. In addition, there's also a heavy presence of dye producing plants like walnut, silver maple, sugar maple, ash, grapevine, honeysuckle, which I use to naturally dye and sell textiles for my company, Earth Dye Goods. Some of the goals for the 25 acre parcel is we want to expand our maple sugaring operation from our current home site to the 25 acre farm. Uh, we only tap a portion of the sugar maples available to us. Uh, we would like to host farm stay experiences, which would encompass a small cabin used for overnight farm stay accommodations, small group class on nutrition, agricultural education, history, and farm to table meals. Farm stay experience would also allow participants to take part in the animal husbandry such as chicken, pig, and goat care, forage for mushrooms, berries, plants, produce, and wildflowers. The cab would all have locally sourced foods and goods such as milks, meats, eggs, honey, maple syrup, soaps, grains, and produce. It also contain locally sourced dyed textiles from our farm and neighboring fiber farms. The goal is to give participants a glimpse of the artisanship and care it takes to produce something from start to finish. We want guests to experience their hands in the dirt collect fresh eggs for their breakfast, and truly see the hard work and efforts it takes into the lifestyle of our products. A little bit of background information on how we got this field scheduled. We began the process of planning out our goals for the property in 2020, and we had approached the zoning inspector in 2021 and 2022 via email with a brief summary of our ideas for the property in which we were told this would not be permitted. I honestly didn't have the energy to figure out how to move forward at the time and table the ideas. Around this time frame, and in efforts to offset our maintenance costs and time dedicated to the property, we allowed campers to use two sites on the 25-acre farm to tent camp, and we were trying to find suitable ways to generate additional income. The main intent was to find an experiential activity, allowing guests to have access to the farm amenities, connect with nature, participate in, and enjoy the agricultural activities on the farm during their stay. We had great feedback from guests and participants. The zoning inspector sent a cease and desist letter. We had no intention of breaking any rules since we knew of no restrictions in place and knew of other similar options in the area. It was already fall, temperatures were falling. We didn't decide to follow up with the matter and just close the two campsites upon receiving that letter. We have also been approached by a neighbor who wanted to lease the land and build a small cabin, allowing us to maintain agricultural operations on the remainder of the farm. We did not move forward with that. In addition, and more recently, we've been contacted by a handful of land developers interested in purchasing this property, constructing a township road, and parceling off to build new homes within this 25 acres. We also do not want to do that. Our goal when purchasing the property was never to build a single family home or a housing development. It was to keep the property zoned agriculturally and continue practicing related activities to provide for our family and the community. At this stage, the objective of this appeal is for our voices to be heard regarding our farm expansion plans that were previously dismissed by the zoning inspector. In 2023, we started communication with a more fleshed out plan explaining what, when, why, and how we plan to use our agriculturally zoned CAUV participating land. The back, the back and forth between us and the zoning inspector was lackluster to say the least. Answers were short, riddle-like, and with no direction on how to move forward after he clearly stated multiple times he would say no to any and all ideas. This began in May of 2023. As the months moved forward, I started to CC the township trustees on any and all communication between ourselves and the zoning inspector. Upon hearing that I was having issues getting answers and moving forward to the appeal process, Marilyn Moore reached out to schedule a meeting with me to discuss the issues we were having. I am, oh, excuse me, I am 100% certain that we would not be here today and we never would have gotten an appeal if I hadn't brought it to their attention. She took our concerns seriously. She worked diligently on getting us answers in direction on how to move this forward and to get this appeal scheduled. 
to get this appeal scheduled, excuse me, to, I diligently are giving us answers and direction on how to move this forward. To get this appeal scheduled, Mr. Zoffer requested that we fill out a permit from the website in which he could deny to provide us with a formal denial so that we could move forward with the scheduling of this hearing. We asked if there was anything specific set up, like a formal application, or if there needed to be filled out with site plans or anything, and he stated there was nothing else that needed to be provided. So I just want to make that clear. This has been a very long, confusing, and convoluted process that felt designed for failure. I can absolutely see why someone would stop and give up. My hope is that in the future, many of these issues can be fixed and this process can progress forward more effectively. Kelly, can you spend a little bit of time um, talking about some of the sales of the uh, timber that you had, sort of how that's yeah. developed, talk about some of the poultry sales? Yes, so in the packet that you guys have on one of the first pages, it titled current uses. And some of the current uses of the property is for timber sales. So we sell, sell like. Yeah, so we sell cores, um, truckloads of timber. Um, all that is harvested from the property. You know, whether it's tree snags that are still standing or those that have recently fallen, um, we're, we're achieving many goals there with not only cleaning up the property, but also uh, maintaining the forestry management plan in place, as well as generating some revenue. That has been a large part of the revenue in our gross annual income generated off the property, which exceeds a loan, $2,500 per year. Um, in addition, maple sap collection is another current use. Uh, I mentioned earlier that we tap uh, just a fraction of the uh, sugar maples on the property. Uh, we collect it, we bring it back to our house and evaporate it, and we sell it commercially. Uh, Moral and wild berry foraging is another current use of the property. Uh, since day one of the property, you know, we've uh, participated in these activities as well as others in the community. And it is it's heavily wooded, um, as you can see from the photos. So for the heavily wooded areas, mushrooms and just wild berries are really the most realistic things that grow there without a lot of significant effort. And then in the open areas is where more of like produce and things are available where there's not the tree cover. So do you sell the berries and the um, We do, have not been selling them yet, but we hope to. Um, so meat chickens, we house meat chickens partially over on the 25 acre property. Um, we currently have them going on our 9.2 acres right now, and then at the end, we take them over there kind of like for the finishing, and that will happen in the fall of this year, and it's been done in previous years as well. And then natural dye harvesting, um, that is uh, like a, a company that I own, naturally tie-dyeing things through earth dyed goods, which is walnuts, leaves, tree bark, um, and other forage materials that are used to dye clothing come from that area. Before you guys sit yeah. down, I have a couple other yeah. questions for you, if you can just expand upon. So, um, Kelly, if you could talk a little bit about your um, <coughs> activity in the background yeah. um, and how that would be incorporated in the educational component of um, the cabin and sort of the... Yeah, um, so my uh, professional work is as a pediatric dietitian. I work for the Bureau of Children with Medical Handicaps. Um, I home visit for kids with nutrition. And by being able to provide um, nutrition education, farm education, teaching people where their food come from is just my life goal. Um, and having this type of opportunity for the community, I mean, I love it. I hope other people feel the same way, be able to learn about food <coughs> from start to finish because there's a big disconnect. They don't teach nutrition education in schools anymore, in most schools at least. Um, and it's a big, it's something very lacking. And that's not just for kids, it's all age groups. It's lacking in every single age group knowing where did your meal come from? Do you have any idea how to grow lettuce from seed to table? And that, that really is the ultimate goal. So now Kelly, she mentioned she works for the BCMA. She does mainly in-home visits. She'll shop with the children she works with. They'll go back to their house um, and they'll prepare meals together. Structure fire. Uh, origin of the product. She'll Okay. 
for unit dispatch is going to be a coven fire. They advise the bottom rung is still red and that fire on it, but not risky. I don't know how long this takes. <laughs> <laughs> we never it's okay. I apologize if some of you can hear me. Um, but the goal would be for. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Nothing should have confused eyes at the resident out front. The investigating will have the industry command. Try again. <laughs> The goal would be for Kelly to work with her patients and bring them to the farm. Nothing chief on scene, two story wood frame, nothing showing two sides, or is it about investigating, making Is it possible to turn it off? I don't know, Richard, do you know? We've tried and tried and okay. tried to have that done. Treasury interior on May Thank you. <laughs> Just keep trying. Thank That's you, Brian, everyone. <laughs> So to bring Kelly's patients to the farm to show them how to plant, how to collect, harvest, prepare those foods that they consume. Yeah, and in our um, in the handout and application that you guys have, some agritourism learning opportunities, I would just like to go over that just to kind of have some information on the things that we would like to provide. So having a farm stay experience in the cabin would benefit many of our local food producers. I'm just going to keep talking. Is that okay? um, and farms in the area and the surrounding Dayton region. As mentioned earlier, the cabin will be stocked with local goods from our farm, like vegetables, eggs, meat, maple syrup, soups, and herbs, as well as other products, including pancake mixes from the mill, milk from the local farm, and bagels from town, locally sourced toiletries, furnishings, and natural textiles, naturally dyed textiles, chicken, pig, and goat tending, in addition to foraging opportunities for year round for those that stay overnight or just for the day. Maple sugaring participation is seasonal, but will be available. To get right, we'll offer private cooking classes, right, farm detail, meals and meals in preparation, agricultural education classes, and intimate farm tips to engage in various farm activities while visiting the cabin. Classes will be for adults and children, right, and there will be a specific emphasis on the pediatric population sir. and those with disabilities, as those are my two specialty areas of practice as a registered and licensed dietitian in the state of Ohio. I'd like to go over some pertinent facts of this appeal and things that we um, just want everybody to know. Uh, classes will be in small group, single family stage to prevent traffic, parking issues, and disturbance issues. Classes will be based on food education and preparation, nutrition, growing your own food, soap and broom making, tree and herbal identification, dye plant identification and use, mushroom cultivation, and berry picking and cultivation. Maple sap collection um, is a seasonal opportunity with the majority being only six to eight weeks in length. All, uh, all the maple sap will be processed on site. The other part of the year will be educational opportunities to learn about maple sugaring, identifying appropriate trees, and collection methods. Collected maple syrup will be available to purchase by class participants, cabin guests, or online. The maple syrup will also be used in cooking classes. Mushroom, berry, vegetable foraging will be available to class participants and cabin guests, and foraging offers many educational opportunities on appropriate mushroom consumption, vegetable growth in raised beds, and native Ohio berry growth preservation in use in recipes. The foraging aspect provides vast opportunities for education on canning foods, eating seasonally, and eating regionally available foods. Classes in the cabin will promote local farm products from our farm and other farms such as dairy products, meats, eggs, grains, honey, maple syrup, produce, soap, brooms, and naturally dyed textiles. And lastly, I want to make it very clear that we have no intention of turning this farm space, this farm space excuse me, into a commercial attraction with normal open business hours where people are just traipsing in and out all the time. There will be a calendar of events and private bookings available on our website, so it will be open in that fashion. Guests will need to be registered prior to visiting the farm, so I just want to make that very clear. It's not something that's just wide open for everybody. I got a question. Yes. So that 25, is it a 25 acre mm -hmm. um, 4,000? Yep. Was that determined a farm by the timber operations, mm -hmm. just the timber operations? And by having a forestry management plan and just being over so 10 acres. So a forestry management plan, do you need somebody to do that? Essentially, it's firewood. Have um, you sold any other? Well, it's not the agriculture. Really matters. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so, just wondering if there's a difference. Yeah. So it qualifies as a farm because it's in excess of 10 acres and it agriculturally produces timber, which we do sell. So timber is firewood. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. 
that we process and, and sell in cords and truckloads. Yeah. Uh, and then the meat chickens that we raise over there um, are sold as well, in addition to the natural dyes that are extracted and produced in the textile business. In addition to that, uh, our gross annual sales exceed $2,500. And when you set up like a forestry management plan, um, I think it's in your guys packet. It is, re it is really interesting if you've never seen one. It gives you a big layout of the land, the distribution of types of trees, how to maintain, how to um, keep it healthy, and how to steward the land in the best ways. Um, it's really interesting if you get a chance to look at it. So are the chickens pinned up over there? So meat birds, you move them along. Um, we have a, oh, like a once mobile, a, oh, sorry. We have a mobile chicken tractor. So that we move, move around the property. And that's how we do meat birds. And then for, hopefully we'll have laying chickens there too, like to be able to get eggs, because you don't get eggs from meat birds. Um, it just looks like by this aerial photograph that there's no open yeah. land at all. If you take the trails, well, if you want to explain a few of things. Yeah, so there's about two miles of trails throughout the property. Um, most of them were already cleared prior to our ownership, and we've had the opportunity and the light to maintain them over the last four years. Uh, but that trail system is a network which connects from the entrance uh, to the vast green spaces throughout the property. And they're sporadically placed, but those are the areas where we focus on animal and produce husbandry. There's a stream that runs through the property as well as a natural spring that are utilized uh, for water, um, both for the animals as well as for the plants. But it does look full, from the picture, like from the, I don't know, you call it a GIS? There is an there. aerial where we do show, um, there's a key with some different uh, signias there that show the general areas where there's plant and, hus and animal husbandry uh, <coughs> currently yeah. being focused. Um, but in open areas to the left, if you take a, one of the trails up to the left, open area, that was where it, like it's just an open area right there and then if you keep going there's another open area in the back left and then there's an open kind of tree i guess treeless area to the right as well too and then there's the approved home site from the previous like right in the center where mm -hmm. the previous family owned it and can you talk to you a little bit about the agricultural and farming activities that take place on the nine acre yeah so um we sell eggs from the nine acre farm we sell produce um, maple syrup because it's kind of like a dual thing we do on you know both sides and then um, yeah eggs would probably be the biggest thing and then we have the meat chickens are partially as well um, meat chickens we do them seasonally either once or twice a year start them over there finish them over there um, maple sap production we have about 10 to 12 sugar maple trees on like the open farm space and then the majority of them are over on the uh, 25 acres that sap is hauled back over to our farm site where the evaporator is. Ideally, we will not have to do that, and we can do that there um, as an educational opportunity. And then eggs um, every Friday, pick up or drop off eggs in vegetables. Yeah. So tomorrow's the day. Anybody? <laughs> so right now, you would say that that 25-acre tract is devoted exclusively to agricultural use. Yes, that's just fine. And if you have a copy, I mean, it's probably evident from the face, but if you look at the exhibit, uh, the packet that's up there, Kelly or Brandon, yeah. can you talk a little bit about just the breakout of the sales, if you will? I think that square report yeah. had some yeah. detailed information as to the various sales. And which property, if that relates to the nine acre farm or if that's specific to the 25 acre farm. That so, that. on yes, this is specific to the 25 acre farm. Square sales from this. I think there was one chicken on this meat bird that was sold later in the year, but the rest of this, pretty much the entirety of this, is wood, wood sales from the 25 acres. Um, coming up in the fall, like this year, there it will have more on here from. Um, the meat bird sales, but that hasn't happened yet this year. Um, also, I think in here has sales from um, Earth Dyed Goods, which is my naturally dyed textile business, um, and that is... That's a separate exhibit. Oh, it's a separate exhibit, okay. Um, well, many of those dyes come from that, are harvested and foraged from that 25 acre parcel as well. And that is, yes, right behind that. Yep, exhibit 10. 
and it shows sales from 2020 up until now. And we've owned the land about the time. And can you explain for the benefit of probably the audience, the BZA is not aware of it, the, the, the current nine around numbers, the nine acres, yeah. um, that currently does not qualify or is not registered as CAUV, no, but can not. you describe sort of the historical agricultural use yeah. in addition to the registration process that's required for the CAUV designation? Yes, for CAUV designation, you have to have like three years worth of um, sales receipts to be able to turn that in with your application. Um, so we LLC the comp or the farm in like 2019, 2020, so we're coming up on that time where we can turn sales receipts in to get a CAUV covered. We're just not there yet. We're hoping to turn that in, um, I think they accept it in January. But prior to our ownership, uh, the property did qualify the CAUV program. It was also much, part of a much larger track. Um, but our goal is when we have the opportunity to provide the sales receipt to register on CAUV. And even though the two properties, the nine acres and the 25 acres, are working, as you've explained, in sort of harmony with each other, mm -hmm. each one requires its own separate designation because they're separate parcels. Yes. Is that correct? I got a question for Richard. Given this testimony, and has your mind changed about whether or not this is a productive farm? Yes, but none of this information was given to me. Or oh, I'm just trying yes. to okay. <laughs> uh, the, the question is, in my mind, um, yes, I, I, like you brought up, I, I had never quite thought of selling firewood as forestry. But it, it obviously, if, if $2,500 or more, or it, it doesn't really matter how much. The, what's what the what the rules say is that it's a farm, 25. But it's more than 10 acres. It's a farm. I think you're wrong on that. What? I think you're wrong on that. On which? On it being a farm. Okay. Well, let this just let me. It may be for CAUV purposes, but, well, see, but the definition of farm and zoning code says it has to be in agricultural production, and right. agricultural production says commercial animal or, or poultry has uh, husbandry right. or the production for commercial purpose of timber, not firewood, but timber, um, field crops, tobacco, fruits, vegetables. And I think the real question is, is, is that what, is it a farm because um, there's commercial animal or poultry husbandry with one chicken having been sold. But do you think that there's a difference between timber and firewood? I think there is. Commercial uh, production for commercial purpose of timber. And timber's not firewood? No. No. No? Not at all. But whose definition? No. Let's say my decision was based on the information I was given that I read you, okay, and the definitions that, as you point out, in, in our code, which are taken from the Ohio Revised Code, and I have copies of these here with me, provided by the prosecutor's office. And as David pointed out, it's commercial. Agricultural production means commercial, and then lists all these possibilities on down the road. The growth of timber for non-commercial purposes, if the land on which the timber grown is contiguous part and parcel of land under common ownership that is otherwise devoted exclusively, exclusively to agricultural use. Okay, so if you could just have woods if part of the land were commercial agriculture, but um, but otherwise it, it it has to be on a contiguous piece of property. So the, the additional farm doesn't count to make this a farm unless the, there is timber sold, as far as I can tell. Now, I was not informed about the, the maple syrup, and I don't know um, that obviously is agricultural production in my mind. Um, the, um, I don't want to nitpick about what qualifies as commercial or not. 
what what degree, whether you're selling things to your friends and or you're, you've got a, a store or, or production. So there, when the new subjects that have been brought up come into play, there is now, in my mind, some question about whether there is commercial, and then we can read through the list. Not aquaculture, not um, apiculture, aviculture. We've got animal husbandry just barely. I'm not sure that was was going on when the application was made. It was. It was, okay. But it wasn't it wasn't or poultry husbandry. The production for a commercial purpose of timber, field crops, tobacco, fruits, vegetables, nursery stock, ornamental shrubs. Notice it's um, ornamental trees, flowers, or sod. And then the I read about timber. Um, And then there's, there are processes that go on in conjunction, for example, drying or storing or marketing the food. Farm stands are completely permitted as long as what's sold at the farm stand, if half of what is sold is, comes from the property, from the farm, okay? It doesn't have to be everything that you sell, but half of it has to be in order to count. But I don't believe that there is currently a farm stand. Is that correct? No, because we're asking for permission to do things on the land, so we are not currently. Well, then you don't have to ask for permission to have okay, a farm stand. Okay, but I'm stand. just stating that we're asking. Yeah. So the the difficulty for me with this case is that I attempted as clearly as I could to explain my denial, and I did not get any of the information that was provided tonight in response to that. I even asked to have meetings so we could discuss it. All right, so and none of that took place. So what we're dealing with now, as I say, is is these definitions that this, the state of Ohio has made and whether they apply to this property or not, in my opinion. And at the time the application was made, if things have changed, then it's new information that we have to consider. I was told everything that he said no to. I tried to provide information, but it was very clearly stated in the email. I will say no. Okay, to. we're here now, so we can move on about that. Uh, did you have anything else? I mean, I do, but I don't okay. think that's everything yeah. from us yeah. for now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, all right, thank you, Charlie uh, Brandon, for the explanation. Uh, hopefully everyone can hear and the testimony was clear as to uh, what was being said and the fire department was taking care of its needs. Uh, so, so to the comment, I mean, we've provided point of sale information that was generated from the 25 acres, right? So be it one chicken or be it 25 chickens or 50,000 chickens, a chicken was sold on the market and that is a commercial endeavor, right? You have heard testimony that they are in the process. It's usually many more. That just happens to be sold later. Correct. Yeah. Like it's and usually 50 to 75. <laughs> yeah, and, though, and, and so though that sales receipt is also within yeah. a window. It's not it's year okay. to date, it's about 2022. It's just evidence to show you guys that commercial activity is being generated from that property. Commercial activity is taking place at that property. Um, and again, be it one chicken, 75 chickens, whatever the number may be, uh, you've also heard testimony about how animal husbandry is taking place at that property. And when you look at the definition, it's any combination. It's not, I mean, you don't run through and say, well, it's gotta be you know 50,000 timber trees. It's gotta be X, Y, and Z. It's just any of that. Right? Any one of those various items that we have described to you qualifies the property for agricultural and it qualifies the property for agricultural production. Okay? Um, I am not aware of any monetary threshold for agricultural production other than sales are generated from what is produced on that property and we have provided you that evidence today. So, can, I, can I ask a question? Yeah. yeah. So, so what does commercial mean? What, did, what do you think commercial means? It's, it, it commercial has to have means some point of sale. It, it has to mean or not point of sale, but I mean it has to mean something more than just animal husbandry. It's commercial animal husbandry. 
So what, that's it, it, what does it mean then? Yeah, well, I mean, the testimony that you've heard, I'll answer it in a different way. The testimony that you've heard today is that chickens are raised, meat chickens are raised, they are utilized, the 25 acres is utilized in that process, and those meat chickens are sold. We have shown you sales receipts to an independent third party that there was a meat chicken, it was on the 25 acres, and now it's in someone's stomach. Right? So someone bought it, someone ate it, someone has consumed it, and it was sold on the open market. But I could argue that's a casual sale, not a commercial sale. Money exchanged hands. To me, that's commerce. Okay. I mean, yeah. So if a, you have 25 acres there, if one acre is being used to produce commercial agriculture, Say we're talking about this stuff about the chicken. Sure. Okay. So let's just take that. So, so is that, you're saying that would qualify it as a farm, even if there are there's a lot of acreage that is not being utilized. That yeah. Way. When you so when you look at the definition, I mean, now we're speaking specific to the definition of a farm, yes. right? Okay. But when you go to the specific definition of a farm, and I'm paraphrasing, okay. but. It's property that's more than 10 acres yes. because we're not dealing with a monetary amount of $2,500. This is a 25 acre parcel. Mm -hmm. And it is properties, and I quote, in conjunction with additional farming property under common ownership. You have property records that show there is common ownership. You have a nine acre farm down the street without question is undertaking commercial farming activities. And this property in and of itself has commercial farming production activities, okay? And this is the definition of a farm. So we've moved away from agricultural production and we've moved on to what qualifies as a farm, okay? So Patron Farms is 25 acres plus nine acres, all right? Specifically, because we're dealing with agro-tourism, which is really what prompted this whole thing, the agro-tourism relates to the 25 acres at this point in time. Now, that may expand, right, because it may bring in the nine acres because of some of the commonality between the two, and I believe that you had discussions with Mr. Zoff as to possibly incorporating the two, right, as to what the next step might be. But again, when you look at the definition of farm, property devoted to agricultural production, this is agricultural production. I mean, agricultural production is taking place on the 25 acres, and when you look at the definition of farm, it's all property under common ownership, and they have clearly stated that there is agricultural production that takes place on the nine acres, and so when you look at the totality of the definition of farm, I think you can move between the two. Even if you don't want to move between the two, and even if you argue that a farm doesn't involve multiple parcels under common ownership, which are related to agricultural production, and you just look at the 25 acres, I think we have met the definition of farm under that 25 acres. And I said that with the Trumps in my initial response. It is qualified as a farm. The question is the production. Yeah, I'm responding to her. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, but, yeah. I mean, that's our position. I mean, you guys are free to make your own decision, but I mean, I think. So it's commercial. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, I mean, in my mind, commercial activity is taking place. If you're bifurcating the definition of timber and firewood, and felled trees and trees that get cut down for a specific purpose, be it firewood or be it sawing logs. I'm not sure that makes a legal difference, but even, even if it does, even if it does, there are poultry husbandry that is taking place on this property that is commercially sold to, to strangers. Commerce exchanges hands. I am giving you consideration for this meat poultry. We are raising meat poultry on this. We are engaged in animal husbandry on this property and therefore it meets agricultural production. Could I add something really quick? Because I just looked something up and I'd like to read it. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Or part of the definition of Hold on a second, please. Oh, OK, sorry. <laughs> um, did you have anything else? Well, I mean, we haven't really even touched upon the agro tourism. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I know you've heard some testimonies that relates to that. But I mean, again, to touch briefly on the agro tourism, Agro-tourism, as I think Richard had indicated, and Mr. Zoff had indicated earlier on, that you know we're talking about a farm uh, that is going to be used for educational, recreational purchases, 
not purchases, sorry, I'm still stuck on agricultural production, but educational, um, recreational, cultural, historical aspects. So much of what you've heard, I think, and what's evident in the presentation that's before you, um, there is farm to table that is directly taking place. Um, as the patrons indicated, they, you know, they came to Richard wanting to know this is what we want to do. So we're not dealing with the situation of, well, golly gee, there's you know, 58 fields of crops and little kids are running out and picking pumpkins. That's not the case. It is we are wanting to make a large investment, run a solid investment in, whoops, into a business plan. And we are, this is what our vision is. Does our vision meet agro-tourism, right? And so I think that they have shown that. I think that they have shown that there is going to be farm to table. There are educational components to it. I'm not positive of the certifications, but I know that she's a certified dietitian, yes. right? So, so I, I don't have all the initials off the top of my tongue, but off the top of my head. But I mean, you're going to have a certified dietitian who is going to take a group of children or adults out. They're going to forage. They're going to bring the food and the vegetables and the plants and the trees and all the other good stuff that that property produces, right? Or the nine acres produces, if we're talking about one farm total and they're going to bring that back and there's going to be cooking classes and there's going to be nutrition classes and it's going to, you know, how do you forage? It's going to be sort of that hands-on experience that so many of us grew up with, but it's all tied to agriculture and it's all tied to agriculture that's taking place directly on the 25 acres. Now, in addition to that, they are willing and they are hoping to bring in other aspects of other agriculture within the community, right? So if they don't have no producing cows, I think the idea is, as it's laid out in the paperwork that's before you, is that they will go and they will go to a local dairy and they will locally source that food as much as they can and they will be bringing that back and that will then be incorporated. And as part of the educational piece, all of that is discussed, right? Kids, this is how a cow, you know, this is where milk is produced. This is where, this is how you milk a cow. This is how milk gets pasteurized. This is how we consume milk. Blah, blah, blah. Well, not, I shouldn't say blah, 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 but you know what I'm saying, right? So there's a variety of information that's going to come across that way. There's also the entertainment aspect that they talked about. I mean, entertainment in the sense that, you know, you can take your grandkids or your kid or you yourself can go out and you can go forage for food. You can go pick berries. You can do a lot of the other things that would, again, be associated with a farm. Um, I know that they have goats. On one thing that they didn't talk about is there are goats on the property, or goats can be brought onto the property for management. That's consistent with the forestry plan. There's actually an article that was included in the information that was provided to you about how you can biologically use goats, or goats, I guess, as a biological mechanism to help with the forestry management, right? If I'm saying that correctly? Yeah. Okay. And so, Versus you know, like herbicides, sorry. Yeah, right, yeah, so it's a, it's a, or mechanical. Or mechanical. yeah, so, so with that, I mean, there's going to be the opportunity to see goats doing what goats do, right? There's an educational piece component with that. Um, there's the overnight stay component, which again, isn't, you know, your typical Airbnb. This isn't something that's going to be necessarily just, hey, on a whim, come stay, right? It's going to be come stay and learn about agriculture. That, that's the part that confuses me the most because it sounds like everything else, there wouldn't need to be an overnight stay, either camping or a cabin because your educational activities, but the, it, it almost sounds a little bootstrapping here to go from educational activities, all of which you know sound fairly good, to overnight stay and so what assures that someone it, it isn't um, a bed and breakfast that or a bed without the breakfast that uh, takes advantage of the of, of the agritourism exception to just have a, a facility to stay overnight and if someone chooses not to take part in the ag educational activities now you've just got a bed and breakfast. That, that's where I'm a little confused too about that. I think that's a great point. Um, I think the type of cabin that we are thinking of is going to be more, I don't want to say it, that would draw in a crowd that would actually be interested in food education and that would be the hopes of the clientele that would want to participate in that. Um, having it fully stocked with locally goods from farms and promoting those local farms, I 
I think it would draw in a specific crowd, not so much somebody that just wants to stay. I understand your question just to expand on it. Our goal is to offer different packages, some more comprehensive than others. So some guests will just come for the day. We're not planning to offer an Airbnb or Verbo accommodations where you can just come and stay in the cabin and you're just coming there for the night for a place to lay your head. It's to come, learn about agriculture, get your hands dirty, learn about farm to table preparation and meals. And that's going to be a more elite package that we would offer rather than allowing us to just come for the day to learn about maybe education or, or help us in harvesting. Yeah, like immersive, hands-on, those are their chickens for the night. That is your, you are tending, you are learning, you are doing this, you are actually participating. That's the vision, that's the goal. Um, yeah, and it, it would, I think, bring in a specific clientele. I don't know. And not everybody likes to do that kind of stuff, so. Can I just say that short-term rentals are allowed in our township too? That they can but no, just a lot. We you can rent. Our our rules say that that you can have one home on a property, and that it can be occupied by a single family. How long they occupy it is not specified. There's short term rentals everywhere in our township today. I'm just saying that they can do that today. We want to hold your testimony. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, th just to expand upon what they, and correct me if I state anything incorrectly, but you know, in my conversations with them, and this goes to, I think, your point, is that it's not, well, golly gee, I want to go spend the night in the woods. I'm going to call up the Patron farm and I'm going to go stay in the woods, right? It's, it's if I want to stay there, then I partake in this other programming, right? I mean, there's educational programming, there's the get up in the morning and you know, you go and you get the eggs from the chicken or whatever the case may be, and you cook that and you know. So it's, 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 not, it's not a overnight, hey, I'm just gonna park my family here and you know, we're gonna have a good old time. It's just, if, if you are coming, <laughs> you know, your rental time starts at X or whatever it is, there's programming, you spend the night, there's educational components as it relates to that overnight stay. You get up in the morning and you're working on a farm, right? I mean, farmers don't get up at 11 in the morning. <laughs> I mean, you're getting up early and you're doing the farming activity and you're coming back and you're eating the food and all the other good yeah. stuff. I mean, did I state that correctly? No, or? that is the yeah. ultimate goal. Yeah. yeah. It seems to me we're getting ahead of ourselves because, correct me if I'm wrong, but it seems like we need to determine whether or not this is a, you know, a productive farm, whether it even, before we go into the agritourism, I'm just, there, there are two components here. The, and the first hurdle has to be, you know, cleared before the second. Well, well, well the first hurdle is why I asked not. Richard that question. Yeah. I'm sorry? That's partly why I asked Richard that question, whether or not his mind has changed. Okay. Have our own minds on that, but to me it seems like this is a productive farm. But, but so we don't need to make that decision first. All right. So where we going so my recommendation is that the decision that was made, that's being appealed from, is that this application does not constitute agritourism. To decide that it, you know, to o to potentially overrule Richard you would have to decide all these things, right? It's not because agritourism is complicated and lots of moving parts. It is the farm definition, it is the agritourism definition, it's all these pieces, but Richard denied, correct me if I'm wrong, that it was that it was agritourism. So that's the no, question. No, that it was a farm. It's a productive a requirement for agritourism, which you, was that so agritourism has to take place on a productive farm. So we have to, you know, it has to be a productive farm first. It has to be agreed upon. They're and not two separate decisions, though. I There's, think I think, no, I think he's, I mean, that's, you have to meet the various steps, but the overall, what what you did was rejected the, the agritourism application. He got there okay. by, by saying it never gets past the first step. And that's what I attempted to clarify at the very beginning, because this is not a two-stage process, and the government, no offense to the government, but they do not have the ability to parsect every clause of every definition and us have to come before you at every single step of the way. I mean, to do so is a flagrant violation of due process and equal protection. 
right? I mean, an application was submitted. The application was for agro-tourism. That application was denied because allegedly, uh, arguably, uh, from staff, we did not meet the definition of a farm, which is a requirement of agro-tourism, right? But, but I would argue to make, for us to make a decision to overrule them or not, that we have to get comfortable with each of those steps as the board to make our decision. But the reason for the denial is a farm. Do we have to agree then as a group that this is a farm? That's what I mean, I is that like the next point. step? I'm in agreement. I think it's a farm. Okay. Yeah. But if you guys are not, I mean, I... I, I disagree. Okay. You don't, because of the definition of timber or... Because of the definition of commercial. Or, or the non-definition of commercial, or the use of the term commercial. Well, my question is, I mean, there's maple sap coming from the from the tract, right? And there's some poultry husbandry. Is that correct? Okay. Um, and we would argue the commercial sale of timber. I don't. I don't. Which is fine. I don't agree with that. that. <laughs> fire. I don't think the fire is not tender. Yeah, it's not tender. I'm just putting it on the record. And, you know, the berries and morels are not sold. The dyes, I don't think, qualify either. So we have those two things that are introduced from that property right there. Is that correct? And the textiles are sold that are dyed with the materials from that property. They are commercial. And you have sales receipts, considerable sales receipts. And that is that is directly harvested. That is directly harvested from the 25 acres. And that is more than 25. Yeah. Yeah, it's like 18,000. I mean, that actually in the rest. So there's more. Yeah. But but I say that I think that the, if you were selling the dyes, that would be the commercial production from the property, not the product that's made. Using the dyes. Why, why doesn't Richard that fit the um, in the agricultural production definition? It says includes the processing, drying, storage, and uh, marketing of agriculture. Correct. Yeah. Right. Processing isn't that processing? Well, we're not processing. The 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 fabric is not part of the. Is it produced on the farm? The color is. The color is. So that that. I mean, yes. And the dyeing of it is. Yeah, the, yes. Yeah, yes. The physical dyeing. Yeah, it's all done. Yes. Uh, but I admit this, this gets complicated. The, if you take a product from a farm, okay, and use it for something else, I think that that's something different. For example, if you you could say that, that high fructose corn syrup is a product of a farm, all right? And then anything we make with high fructose corn syrup is now a product of the farm? No, it's not. We don't consider soft drinks to be a product of the farm. But the raw materials from the farm the are a product of yes. the farm. Yeah, the, raw, the, the corn makes the ethanol, but we don't call the ethanol a product of the farm. So if I grow my own wheat, and I make bread with this. Yes. Is the bread a product of the farm or is the wheat the product? The wheat is the product. So you just have to sell it to yourself. The dye would be a product. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. 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 The chickens and the dog. I, I think if I cut down a tree and I sell it, and the person that buys it turns it into their wood floor or they turn it into a wood fire, I've still sold the wood as timber. I agree. That is our position. So we don't have that is a commercial timber. sale. Timber is. We don't. I'm not aware of the, the definition of timber. Okay. Maybe there is, but that would be buried deep in the code somewhere. That's certainly not in the agriculture section. The Ohio State's definition of timber for farm purposes is any tree that's standing or fall is timber. So, and then the sale of that would be the sale of timber. Okay. Anybody else? 
I am happy to partake in discussion. I don't know if you want me to finish our presentation. I tell you, or if you, if you were finished. Finish. <laughs> I mean, I'm happy to do this however you guys want to. I'm not trying to complicate yeah. things. I mean, if you, per, you know, if you want to get over the first step, you know, more power to you. I'm happy for it. Um, and we're not done. I, I mean, but we do have a little bit more to talk about on the agro tours. So, however you guys. Keep chatting. Keep okay. Chatting. All right. Keep All right. Chatting. Our drum will soon stop beating, so I promise you. I know. I know it's a long evening. So okay. So with the agro tourism, like I said, I mean we've talked about we've talked about um, a variety of aspects to it, right? We've talked about the farm component. Um, we have talked about the agricultural component. We have talked about the educational component. We have talked about the entertainment component. Um, you know, the education, as I talked about, and just to sort of summarize here before I step down from the podium, um, there is going to be, you know, a variety of educational pieces. It's going to be led by uh, a certified dietitian. Dietary cuisine is going to be a big piece of the puzzle. Uh, cooking, you know, where does it come from? How does it come from? You know, what's native? I mean, a big piece of that forestry plan that you talk about, uh, and I think has also been through the testimony is, we're looking to do native Ohio type things, right? So it's what, you know, what's indigenous to the area. We're not bringing in, I mean, even though it would still qualify for agriculture, I mean, I think from an educational, a cultural, and a historical perspective, you guys are looking to have Ohio type plants and Ohio type uh, food served um, at, the, at the property. We've talked about guided tours. We've talked about self-education tours. One of the things, or if we wasn't talked about, I think it's in the literature, one of the things is, you know, there will be pamphlets out, uh, or at least we've talked about there being pamphlets out. So if one's going on the two mile trails and they want to look and say, hey, this is a, you know, a mulberry bush. This is what a mulberry bush looks like and with the narrative description as to what, you know, mulberries are, right, and how they can be used. Um, again, we've talked about the entertainment, the recreational. Um, some of that's going to be the guided tours that they have or the self-guided tours. Some of that's going to be the you pick, you know, you and the family can go out with your little basket, collect berries, bring them back. Um, you know, they, she's talked about canning operations. Uh, you heard Kelly talk about that. You've talked about this, a variety of things, all of which originates from the property itself, right? And then you can bring in the other cultural aspects of what you know relates to agriculture within the region and within the you know within the immediate area. Um, again, we've talked about for purposes of the definition of farm specific, it is not just one parcel. It's how many parcels are under common ownership and used for an agricultural production, right? They've established that the nine acres and the 25 acres both independent of each other and without question when taken together, there is agricultural production, right? You've also heard information tonight about how this is not a, I'm just gonna show up, camp out for the night, rent out the cabin and you know, I'm on my way next thing in the morning. It's every component in every step of the way has an educational piece, has a cultural piece, has an entertainment piece. You can choose, Right, you don't have to do every program, but there is set programming established with every aspect and every step of the way uh, as you go through this. So, with all that being said, um, you know we feel that the testimony that you've received tonight, certainly within the information packet and what you've heard directly from myself and from Brandon and from Kelly, is the property does qualify as a farm. Their proposed use for the property qualifies for agro tourism purposes. Uh, and we respectfully request that Mr. Zoff's original opinion be overturned and the agro-tourism be granted. We're happy to answer any questions that you guys have. Because of the nature of an appeal, it's not a true public hearing or a typical conditional use or very, we'd like to take comments you may. I would like to. Great. Um, generally, what we've done in the past, is we've heard their testimony. Um, I'm wondering if anybody in the audience is uh, against this overturning of this appeal. So, is there anybody who would like to speak? Yeah, I would. Can I swear in anyone who wants to talk? Yes. Okay. 
Can, any, you, can you swear everybody? Well, anyone who wants to talk, I'll have you stand where you are. Raise your right hand. Single, every single person. Uh, uh, raise your hand. And do you swear or affirm that the testimony you provide is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Say I do. Thank you. So I'm an adjoining. Can you come up to the podium? Sure. Thank you. I'm Carol Colbertson. I'm an adjoining property um, with the Patrons. And my concern would be the noise of chainsaws. Is this, you know, I mean, it sounds so great, harvesting timber and all of the real cozy educational components, but I'm thinking if you're harvesting that much firewood, is it really an agro-tourism, or at this moment, at least, is it a firewood business with chainsaws? Well, so, haven't they been doing this so far? Has it disturbed you so far? I haven't. I don't live on the property at the moment, but I can't imagine living with the chainsaws. <laughs> this would, would this forestry wouldn't. They'd be able to do forestry whether they got out or Right. Yeah. Just my concern. That's a completely valid concern. I would like to take somebody that's in favor of this agriculturism. Uh, hi, I'm Hannah Alamari. I live in the village with my husband and our seven-year-old son. Uh, I first did a quick search in law and just want to say a quick sentence here of the definition of commercial agriculture. So there was some back and forth on what that actually meant. Commercial agriculture can be defined as farming that focuses on producing agricultural products for sale in the market rather than solely for substance purposes. So in that simplicity, it doesn't matter the volume at which you're doing it, it just means for more than sustenance for their family. Um, and where does what's it appear? The um, it is a, I can send it all to you after or send it out it's um i just looked up on google the law um as it defines commercial agriculture do you know if it's referencing does it say like rc and then a number does it reference the law or is it under ohio law <coughs> yeah. um that does not i don't see anything on here okay. um of rc okay as it stands and i would also like to note that I, as someone in the village with a little one having the opportunity to take him somewhere to learn about what's going in his body. That is exciting. It isn't just a textbook that he looks, oh, five apples and the pyramid, what we had as kids, would be really um, enriching for him and his growth and his development to be able to go to the farm and be a part of that, um, I think could bring a lot to not only the adults in the community, but also the children. Thank you. Thank you. Is somebody opposed? Anybody else opposed? Opposed or for? Uh, for for the opposed. Uh, 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 no, confusing myself. Here. It doesn't want this to happen. Put it simply. Does it want the overturning to happen? Is <laughs> 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 there somebody in here that doesn't want this overturned? What? Doesn't want this proposed. The proposal was denied. Does anybody not want that denial overturned? I'm Robert Train. I live or I border the uh, west side of uh, the Patron's uh, 25 acres. And uh, when I purchased many, many years ago, I figured the land would be used for residential purposes or at most uh, um, honey. And uh, so this is a little bit different than what I expected. And I'm concerned that uh, what this agritourism opens up as me next door to that, uh, um, as Kelly and they have stated, they want to keep it simple right now, but what keeps that simple? Uh, they're talking about putting one cabin in. What keeps them from putting 10 or 20 cabins in there? And all of a sudden, my, my quiet uh, house uh, gets overrun by tons and tons of people all the time. And also, what, uh, what kind of uh, 
things are put in place to make sure that they operate as they state. You know, they're staying, stating that uh, they're only going to allow people to rent the cabin that are going through classes and stuff. But uh, I know they had campsites before. It was out on the open public, and anybody could rent the, the campsite and stay there, even though they had no facilities or anything else there. <coughs> when they say they only had one chicken, <laughs> I doubt it was on that property overnight or for any length of time because the coyotes would have had it. <laughs> Unless it was locked up very well. Yeah. <laughs> so, like I said, I fear what could happen opening up the door. And I hope you consider that your decision making as well. And one other thing, I did read on there that for timberland, commercial timberland, it has to be over 25 acres of timber in order to qualify for that, just as a note. Those are very good concerns. Um, under this, under agritourism, can we set limits as to what they're allowed to do as far as how much they're allowed to build? You mean like we would if it was a variance? Yeah, something like the that. Short answer is, the short answer is no, because the agriculture exemptions in the state of Ohio are very strong. The the backstop to, like, can they just do anything, is no, they can only bring themselves, I mean, just like any kind of agriculture, you have to keep yourself within the terms of, of agriculture, through the law, through your code, predominantly through the law. If you don't, now you've got a problem, right? Because now you have a violation that you're not under the agriculture, agritourism umbrella, and you're out from other it and could have a zoning file. So what would, if we overturned Richard, and I assume that means then a permit would be issued, and what's that permit going to say is acceptable? Um, I mean, it could be based on the application that's been submitted. If additional information is needed, it could be based on the testimony that's been here tonight. Um, so if your question is, what happens if something extra gets added? I think that the, at that point, the question is, is it still agritourism? So 10 years from now, is it still agritourism, right? Now they're doing honey, or now they're doing cheese, or something, right? Is it still agritourism? And we go through the same analysis and we look at the law. If it's not, then they're in violation of the law, the code, the permit. So again, if we overturn Richard, and, and they wanted to build 10, cabins rather than one cabin is that they take the risk of that being in violation or not right well if it's not agritourism related it's not agricultural related then it's not yeah. I mean, so, so when, when you issue permits for agritourism elsewhere what do they say i mean i, I don't know what I that yet have issue one. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. in, in issuing the in allowing the agritourism that's not giving the permit to build the cabin though, correct? Like they still need to get permitted for not putting a building on their property. From the from the building department, but not from zoning. Okay, agritourism is a subset of agriculture. Okay, mm -hmm. the state of Ohio says it has to be able to happen. Okay, we don't, we don't get to say we want agritourism in our code or not agritourism in our code. Right. Okay? And we have to work with their definition. Okay. So where it becomes complicated is that the definition that the state of Ohio made is impressively vague, okay, related to agriculture, if, if, if you distill it down. Okay. What has happened over time since the law was put into place is the people have been fighting now in the courts to define agritourism. Okay. And the most recent court finding um, was in at the appellate level in the second district here in Ohio, which means it covers Green County. And I'm going to read this because this is this seems to me to correspond with the same standards I've been using when I talk with people about agricultural activities. This is okay. The court finds that the distinctions in the applicable zoning provisions are best understood by the purpose of the activity. 
In other words, agritourism addresses agriculturally related activities that allow the public to observe, participate in, or enjoy the agricultural activity. It is not that the activity brings people to the farm where they may observe animals, like alpacas or chickens, or sit on bales of hay while they are there for a social event like a wedding. The definition is limited to agriculture-related activities, such as U-pick operations or farm markets, that allow or invite members of the general public to observe, participate in, or enjoy that activity. That sounds exactly like our definition in, in the zone. It probably is. <laughs> Lots of codes take direct from the statute, but they can't. Okay. That's, not, that's not strange. But the, you know, the, the big arguments have been over the weddings in particular. Mm -hmm. but. What, what it says is it's not a place where you go and look at animals, right. okay? It's a place where you are participating in agriculture, mm -hmm. okay? So if, if I'm a, a, a corn farmer, then if you want to ride with me in the combine while I'm harvesting, that would be agricultural tourism, all right? You're participating in the agricultural process, or you're, you're out there helping plant, or you're out there in all the steps that are involved. Corn's not such a, maybe not the best example. If it's animal husbandry, then you're, 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 you're involved in the whole process. You're, you're not just, oh, giving some food to the animals. You're feeding them on their schedule, knowing what it's about, because you're, you're working with someone who is practicing <coughs> agriculture and learning from them. And what I have learned as a, as a litmus test is that if what you want to do can take place some other place than on a farm, it's probably not agritourism, okay? So if you're going to get classroom education, you've got classroom education anywhere, but if you're going to uh, plant things or, or weed the garden or whatever, you're actually involved in the agriculture, then it would be agritourism. So and we spoke to the immersive experience of the educational mm -hmm. yeah. as it but That's, as that's the critical part. I think that obviously if you if you go to the farm and you spend a week on the farm and you're 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 up at, at, at farmer hours and you go to bed at farmer hours and you're doing agriculture all day long, then spending the night there is is incidental. Okay? It's 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 not the main focus. But if you're there overnight and you have breakfast with an egg that you picked out on the farm and you leave, that you spend a lot more time sleeping on the farm than you did involved in agricultural activities. So, so and again that's not what we're No, I'm, I'm saying those are the kind of ideas going that back I have to this man's concern yeah. of this blowing out of proportion besides your word. Yeah. I also read that you're trying to supplement the cost of all this acreage. Mm -hmm. Well, turning this into more cabins and things like that would also supplement. Other than by going by your word, is there any township Rules. I mean, is this even 300 foot of front wish? Can they can they put a cabin on this? Yes. Don't, yeah, it's far in excess of 300. Okay. <laughs> but could they put 10 cabins right. on it that were livable? Are there limits? No. You you could not unless they a drag they qualify to drag or tourism. They could put 10. So if we say yes to agritourism, they could put. You can put any structure that's related to agriculture. You can't, the state of Ohio does not allow us to regulate agriculture, all right? Um, you can build as many barns as you want for your agricultural purposes. You can build as, um, you know, there, there's no limit to that. You can't start building houses just to rent houses. That's not an agricultural activity. Mm -hmm. no, but if you're saying the houses are part of agritourism and you can justify that, saying that like a school camp <laughs> yeah maybe like a school camp that would that would that might be a good analogy where the, the primary goal to go to camp is not to stay in the cabin it's to spend the whole rest of the day studying in that case studying nature okay let's move on did you have something to say is this four can i speak four yes you can 
My name is Zoff Barazano. I'm the director across the street from Locke. Mr. Zoff, would you please read the section 2.231 from the code? When you say you live directly across from the pool, or is that 4,000 a lot? 25 acres. Okay. On the curb on Kyle Road, uh -huh. my house was the one on the curb, so my long end of the lot is the side contiguous to the okay. 25 acres. Now, this, this is the same definition of farm that we've been using. Land that is composed of tracts, lots, or parcels, totaling not less than 10 acres, devoted to agricultural production, or totaling less than 10 acres devoted to agricultural production if the land produces an average yearly gross income of at least $2,500 from agricultural production. Okay, what's the optimal word in that sentence? Devoted to agricultural production. You no, know, the optimal word is or. It's a farm by definition because it's over 10 acres or it's not less than 10 acres. I agree. It has nothing to do with dollars associated with the production. So we're talking about a That's farm. Not, right. There's no okay. argument there. Okay. So the original turndown was turned down on the wrong basis. The law doesn't allow that turndown. So that the zoning as it stands now needs to be overturned. Um, I just have a couple of thoughts I'd like to put in your head. So you guys debated earlier, you know, kind of definition of commercial. So do you guys, um, how is your business organized? Uh, do you have an LLC? Have an LLC. And incorporated? So, so you have an LLC, you're reporting income on or do you pay you know, sales taxes on and stuff that you sell? I don't know how much more commercial it gets. I just also want to point out, kind of drawing to the personal experience of doing the shows through the temp use provision, the whole reason we had to come before you and ask for that is I was told unequivocally that if we sold one ticket, one commercial ticket gets sold, that we have to, I'm, not, I'm in violation of agricultural use, I need to come, you know, get approval. So it seems a bit ironic now that we're questioning whether it's casual sales or whether it's commercial. I think uh, they're operating as a full business and selling stuff off their farm. If we're going to then start arguing whether cutting a log of this length and putting it on a truck or whether we cut it this one and chop it up into pieces or whether that's timber or not, I think we're splitting hairs. So I just want to make this point. The second thing is um, we own property out in the township too. It's subject to the agritourism clause. Anybody that's out there, anybody in the village, the state of Ohio mandated it back what, 2015 or so, Richard. So every township, incorporated or unincorporated, has to have the exact same language in it. Right? I have played with that language for the last couple of years considering business investments on my property, significant ones. And, and I've tried to have conversations here. And it's not just Richard, I think it goes deeper into our zoning philosophies in, in the town, but, but there's a resistance because of the vagueness of the language. And, and you guys are struggling with it just like every other court case and, and appeal that's probably gone before the EZA. The problem is just saying no to everything isn't the, isn't the right direction. The state of Ohio said we want agritourism to be able to encourage economic activity that's outside of just straight commodity farming on rural, rural farms. That's why they did it. So I asked Richard one day during a detailed, lengthy intellectual conversation, I said, please stop. I said, just give me, give me what's your example of agritourism? And the only example Richard could think of is he said, well, I suppose if a farmer's um, picking their corn and they're driving their combine around the fields and they want to offer rides for $20 and you get to go ride in the combine, that would be agritourism. This is, this is getting ridiculous. I mean, I, I know it's hard to split hairs and I know there's fear by landowners that, that all these things are going to go crazy and wild, but we're going to need to dip our toes into it at some point in time. You know, the court case is the one that Richard speaks up in Caesars Creek. Read the court case. They specifically did not rule whether the activity was agritourism or not. In fact, they declined to rule on whether it was. All they said was, we think the BZA did a good job of considering all things and running from their decision. They did not rule on it. They even speak about the vagueness of it. So I know it's a tough job, but this isn't a concept that's uh, you know, putting Ferris wheels out in the middle of the woods. Uh, we're going to have to trust. It's the code. It's the law. Ohio put it out there. You can't regulate it. You guys are wanting to consider how you regulate whether it's going to be one cabin or three. You don't get that choice. 
Well, well, I, have, I can mention one thing. <clears throat> it is relevant. We didn't always say no, but it wasn't this full board. But Clementine's is under agritourism. Mm -hmm. Yep. That the Board of Zoning Appeals approved it. So we're not all saying no to everything. Perfect. So that's a great I, example. I think it's so a good point that needs to be made. <coughs> my, my point is looking at the Some of the stuff that they are doing is okay. some of the things that Clementine's is doing right yeah. now. That's correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I just think we need to dabble our toes. We need to trust the process a little bit because I think you're. We're trying to say we don't like this code that Ohio forces to put in it, and so we're gonna we're gonna just really nitpick everything about it. This is farming. It's not conventional farming. I'm done. I welcome it in the community. I welcome it for what they're trying to do for families. I welcome, I'd be proud to have this in my community. I really appreciate you guys considering. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hi, Dino Palata, Yellow Springs resident, and township president. It's funny, two years ago we went through this same drill in agritourism when, uh, when I was running for township trustee, and Earl and I were talking about this. It's amazing that we come two years later and we're still stuck. We're still at the same position. Um, we've talked about agritourism. We went through this litany, and I'm going to go through what, what we went through two years ago and where we're at today. Agritourism can be thought of as a combination of tourism and agriculture. It provides another form of commercial enterprise as a working farm. The purposes and activities of, it, of agritourism provide a cultural, educational, historical, entertainment, educational activities that are all agriculturally related. This farm is a quintessential example of that, of agritourism. There is an Ohio Supreme Court case in 2020, Litchfield Township versus Blueberry Barn. In short, the ruling stated that Blueberry Barn, which primarily grows, uh, uh, grows grapes for, for, for making wine, was allowed to hold weddings and other social events on the, on the farm due to the agriculturally related activities, purchasing their wine, they're making wine on there, they're purchasing, their, their wine is being purchased. The court distinguished between primary use versus secondary use. They also cited Ohio State University football stadium. It's primarily a football stadium for six games out of the year, but the rest of the year it's being used for everything else, for any other activities. But it's still a football stadium. There are secondary uses for it. What came from this was the ruling exemplifies exactly, exactly what the Patron Farm is trying to do. It's property rights. It's the ability for the farm to have another source of income, alternative source of income, it also gives you an opportunity to, if you were talking about things that were coming up, uh, 10, 10 houses, 15 houses, cabins, all that, you can also put conditional uses. I think you can go into a conditional use if you wanted to get more delve into this. I don't know that I want to go into that, but there are other opportunities. I think Steve's had to do this too with, with conditional uses. But with that ruling, that's what agritourism is, and they're following that line. And I hope you guys would see it that way. Thank you. I'd like to make the note that the state of Ohio makes special exemptions for wineries. <coughs> they spell out that they can do all these other things. They don't spell it out for any other form of agriculture. Well, I also think that we'll be hearing agritourism cases mm -hmm. for a long time. Because I think it's an individual basis. Um, people will apply for it. And we had to determine whether it was just like that. What was on Dayton Hill Springs Road? And we denied it for specific reasons. But we can also approve for specific reasons. Anybody else want to speak? I'd like to ask a question. So going back to this conditional, you know, to conditional uses. So we, we don't, we are not able to put any conditions. Uh, we either approve it or we deny it, right? We cannot put conditions on you know, noise or lights or things like that, or, or number of If you're looking at me for clarification. Oh, oh, I should <laughs> 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 The answer is no, because again, it's not conditional. Okay. 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 Agricultural activities roll up to the statute, to the law, okay. of what they can and can't do. Agritourism has a couple exemptions. Um, <laughs> I need to stop using the word exception because we're going to get ourselves in a full rabbit hole. 
but agritourism, so looking at the definition right. um, and, the, and the provision under the overall agriculture umbrella, you can regulate as a township with respect to agritourism. Size of a structure used primarily for agritourism, size of parking areas that may be required, setback, building lines, ingress and egress. Those are regulated at the code level. Mm -hmm. and I mean, I yeah, see it, they already yeah. are, and they already are. That's, yeah. that's the township's ability to regulate, which keep in mind is more than you can for true, like whatever the statute decides is true, regular old agriculture, which is you have five or more acres and you're doing true regular old agriculture, can you regulate on all. What was the first? One that you mentioned it was for? Size of structure. Oh, size of structure. Yep. Okay. So that's the only thing we could. Yeah. Well, that, again, that comes out of the code. That's, that's a code based, not really a BZA based regulation. Okay, got it. Yeah. We have the, the right to make agritourism a conditional use. What that means is that the, the, there are conditions that have to be reviewed, okay, in giving. The application it means that basically it comes to the BCA first. It doesn't go through me. Uh, okay. I actually I disagree with you there, Robert. Well, sure. there are several townships that I have, have no that doubt. Irrespective of the given instance, agrotourism is a permitted use. It is a use by right under the agricultural authority. So I mean, that is I'd say maybe that hasn't been challenged, but I know no, 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 I'm saying, of, right, I just of people to... putting it in their codes, they've done it both ways. Yeah, I'm just to address one of the one of the concerns with this, I mean, uh, the patrons have presented what I would say is agricultural tourism. I mean, they're they're going to teach people how to farm, but at the same time, you know, if if a hundred people come in for a wedding, that's not agritourism. And if we open the door for this to be an educational facility, are we opening the door for it to be a wedding facility? Is that the same thing? So. Whoever has talked about weddings in agriculture is 100% correct. I forget if that was you, Richard, or one of those speakers. That's it. That's primarily where the case law is happening right now, wedding mm -hmm. barns. Probably many, if not most, I certainly have been to weddings in barns in the last 10 years. It's very popular. Um, the cases are still figuring out, meaning, I mean, all the way up to the Ohio Supreme Court are still trying to figure out when is a wedding barn more like a barn, and when is a wedding barn more like any other wedding venue that you can rent out on, on a Saturday night. Right. But that's really not for us to decide, right? That's for the, the courts to decide that. They're in the process of doing that. Okay. It, those, all of those cases come from somewhere in the process, sometimes from the BBA, sometimes it comes from a denial of pending. But under the ag umbrella, that's, those are falling into either the blueberry barn, which is venting, or um, I, true, like what I'm calling true regular ag, which is that's a um, structure incident to the use of the property for ag. So this is a, even a third category under this umbrella, which is specifically agritourism. So to, 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 circle, to circle all of that back to, around, if the activity, again, the, the cardinal rule is if the activities on the property are agriculturally related and stay within the statute that's applicable, applicable to them, they're permitted under the statute. And you could only regulate to the tune of, like I was talking about, size of structures, whatever the statute says. So then it's up to us to decide what, what we want to consider agritourism? Is that, it? Is that what it boils down to? Or? To, to interpret those words, I guess. Yeah. It, is, it is your responsibility to interpret the words. So I mean, this idea of teaching kids and adults how to feed chicken, how to, how to collect eggs, how to harvest mushrooms, how to collect dyes from the woodlands, how to cut firewood. I mean, those all seem like, that's something I want to say, hey, Yellow Springs, let's, uh, let's learn how to do this stuff. That, well, we could like say, that. we could limit the size of the structure. Okay. Right. Well, you right can, the code does. The code already does the code talk about already setbacks and sizes. Oh, all sizes too? I thought, okay. Yep. Okay. Ingress and egress, I think size of parking. There, there's, parking. There, we're we're, we're relatively limited by the by the statute and what we can regulate. And, and, and the, the, what was adopted in our code basically reflects other districts. In other words, we limit the height of buildings because of the firefighting primarily, not 
not because there's something wrong with skyscrapers. It's just that we don't have the facilities to deal with them. So what would those restrictions say about their structure? The problem, well, I haven't, I haven't seen plans for their structure, but probably it would have no impact. They, they would be regulated by fire regulations, which have nothing to do with, with township zoning. Um, if, they're, if they're housing more than a certain number of people or a certain number of rooms, then they have to have fire suppression. Well, I'm, I'm confused because I thought you said the code regulated the size. I think you do have size regulations. So. Yeah, but, but it's, it's basically the height of the building. Oh, not so the, it's not the square footage, footage, footage. footage. Okay. So they could cut down every tree on their property and build <coughs> giant facilities. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> but there is yeah, a, so a large barn that could facilitate the <laughs> better. So, but the tree hug would then we have to deal with traffic and parking or not parking yeah. the traffic. Good so the cut so the section five A one agricultural district. You have height regulations. Oh, I'm probably not in the right section. You probably have an agritourism specific, but that's not there are height. Um, Again, yeah. we, we've just been given permission on the state is specifically in, in, in agritourism to do some regulation. A farmer can build a barn any size he wants. There's, there's no regulation of that. So it, this it says that the site, form. they have to submit a site plan that shows yeah. the land and buildings mm -hmm. to be used for agritourism, all septic systems, wells, driveways and parking areas, all residents and property boundaries in and within 250 feet of the proposed land and buildings. Yeah, for example, I mean, not to complicate the issue, but I'm assuming there's not active sanitary sewer, right? So, I mean, you're going to have a structure, there's going to be a septic system, there's going to be a leach field. I mean, there's a lot of things that go into the development of this type of property. Um, not that I want to state anything that doesn't work for these guys, but I mean, to the question of if we suddenly put up a barn and are holding, you know, graduation parties there on a daily basis that have absolutely no relation then Richard runs out and issues a citation and says, this isn't agro-tourism. The building might be able to be there, but the activity that is taking place is not agro-tourism, right? So, I mean, there are protection. I don't want you guys to think that you're necessarily approving a blank check, because I think there are checks and balances that the township can take. I mean, I don't want to speak for- No, right. That, that's what I'm trying for, to say. Yeah, I mean, enforcement right. is going to come down to what's covered under this umbrella. If it's not under the umbrella, it's not getting the ag exemption, which means it has to fully comply with the zoning code or get a variance from you. So so what's the point of Richard issuing a permit in the first place? What's the permit do? This is all permitted by statute and by rate by the zoning regulations. What was the whole point of him? Most townships have a sort of an administrative permit. It's not uncommon. Most townships have an administrative permit because Lots of folks say they're, I mean, and I don't, not, not you guys, not, not this room, I'm just, there are lots of things that people say, what's well, ag? Well, it's not just ag, I mean, as a lawyer, I'm like, well, it's not just ag, because you say it is, can you, can, you, can you explain? So the permit process often gives the opportunity for the zoning inspector to receive the information that says, oh yeah, it, and to be able to confirm, that's why. And that's what the way, too, you can confirm for the future, 10 years from now, you know what was, you know, what came in, what was occurring, at least then. That's not so he could have, had he, and I'm not going to, I don't want to put words in your mouth, Richard, but had Richard gotten all of this information ahead of time and said, oh yeah, this is a farm, and this does look like agritourism, he could have just written the, the accept and the permit, accepted yeah. the permit, and mm -hmm. we wouldn't have this evening. Exactly. Well. <laughs> <laughs> But the pay is okay. So. Yeah, the pay is okay. Is it really? Uh, this is my first gig here. Okay. Um, this is, I, honestly, this is the kind of thing I want to support. Do you guys want to talk about this private thing? Or do you want to make a ruling on it? Eli, let me just, from my follow the rules perspective, yeah. and I, mean, I don't want to get into an argument. Because you support it doesn't right. necessarily mean it matches the law. The law right. and, and that's where you're being asked to, to see whether this 
proposal matches the, the law. So I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, what I've heard is if they build a giant barn and start doing weddings, which would then um, really truly affect uh, Carol and, and I'm sorry, sorry, I don't remember your name. Um, but it would truly, I mean, that would truly impact them. You could then, you could then give them a citation because they didn't have the proper septic system for a thousand people on their property. More than just issues, like that's just not adequate. Actually, right. yeah, they would be, would they be coming in and saying, this isn't, yeah, this isn't agricultural. It is this, you're having weddings in a barn is not a permitted use based on, on the, in this case, you say, no, it's agritourism and no, the court cases have, at least say to me, you have to see if they say it to you, mm -hmm. that no, that's not a, a permitted use. The, the, the things like, like septic systems and everything else is a function of the health department. I don't, you don't I, take care of that. If someone is building a home, they have to qualify for a septic system before we will give them a permit to build a house. Mm -hmm. Because if it goes the other way around, people are, you know, it's very hard to build a house and then have somebody tell you that you can't live in. All right, so to make this cut and dry, there is a barn on the property now that could definitely house a wedding. That's on the 9.2 acres. Just, yeah, just so that's not what we're talking about. 25 so acres. You're not combined. I thought you guys were combining both of these. No, within the definition of farm, because it's one or more parcels under common ownership. So the point was, is that to meet the definition of farm, both the nine acres. So we're not ruling on both parcels. The both application was for the 25 acres. Okay. For average okay. maximum. Okay. So Correct. legally, it seems like according to our definition, what they're proposing to do on their 25 acres is agritourism. That would be my my take on it. So then we have, to, I mean, so all of us need to agree, or three of us need to agree, that this is agritourism and that it's a farm, which was the original yeah, the, reason okay, for I, I keep <coughs> sorry, I'm about a, a productive farm, farm, a productive farm, that There's it would qualify for, farm. for agritourism, a, a productive farm that would qualify for agritourism. Is there a process we can go to to this besides voting, or is there more discussion? I, th I think that is the question. I think that we have to, to agree that both of those exist. Okay. Um, Ohio Tax Code says that uh, 10 acres of continuous forest land sold for um, or raised for the sale of wood. Not, it, it didn't say what, what kind of wood would make a commercial, I mean, that, that's what qualifies for timber land. One of the, which I think is a different test. One of the things I would mention is okay. I think you guys are trying to do this the right way. Mm -hmm. And by doing this the right way, it's even going to be more of a productive farm. I believe that. I mean, even the township trustees did something and then asked for permission later. And I'm talking about the mill on the mill road. Mm -hmm. These people are asking for permission and then probably going to increase into a more productive farm. That's my personal opinion. So I tend to agree with you, Elon. Mm -hmm. I do as well. Can I add something? Just real quick. Yes, come I, I, I don't want to say that. I just want to say what they're doing is wonderful. I'm, Can you come up to the podium? You get to be on video. <laughs> <laughs> So I, I appreciate what you guys do, really. I think it's wonderful. I mean, I've got three little grandkids. Um, my concern is I think the classes are great. I'm right next door. My concern is having people spend the night, strangers, in and out, every weekend. I know they don't say they don't want to turn it into that, but can you honestly say, I'm going to call you up and say, hey, I just want to camp there for the weekend. I really don't want any classes. I just want it peace and quiet. You're going to turn money down for that? If it's not what we describe to the board, yes. I can 100%. 100%. 100%. 100. I am so invested in this. 100. And then I, I would love for you guys to take a walk out there because we live next door. We have the 12 acres. We have an acre that's clear for our residents. 
and I can't grow anything vegetable-wise because we're so shaded because all of it is woods. So my concern is, you know, they want to harvest and do all this. They're going to have to clear a lot of the trees in order to produce produce. There's open space already, very clearly from <coughs> visitors say. There's open space to the left, to the right, and to the back left. Okay, enough to get, I mean, you're doing like raised beds, I'm assuming. That's, yeah, that's the goal. You can absolutely hear that for sure. Okay. Well, good luck with this year. And, uh, <laughs> but I, I'm, I'm for it, but you have to understand our, my concern is strangers coming and going and crime, alcohol, guns, are they going to allow weapons? Um, you know, not with the security of, you know, education with kids and stuff, but how far are you going to take it? That's, that's the concern. As much security as possible. Very seriously. Very seriously. Because, you know, put yourself in our Oh, I understand. I have two little kids. I understand. Right. And, you know, if you want to do your classes and your camping and everything, do it on, do it on your night acres. Come over and pick the berries and, and do the goats and have your thing, but put the, put the cabin and stuff on your night acres. Where you can supervise them, you're you're there, twenty fourth of it. They're very close. There, so thank that's you. all I have to say. Sorry. Thank you. Thank you. No, thank you. Yeah, I have a lot of reservations too, um, as far as how the neighbors are impacted. However, I don't feel like we have any control uh, over that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, um, well, just from because of the. Uh, because of the state, we right. we have no power to we don't have a choice on that. Yeah. Yeah, because, um, so I, you know, I tend to agree that, um, that it's a farm and to permit the agritourism with reservation, like I said, with reservation that stated. Um, but, Within our power. How do you feel? How do I? I am still having problems with the commercial aspect of, of agricultural production at this stage. I think it's it's been stretched to try to make it commercial, uh, uh, and I think at some point in the future it may be. I just don't know that it's there today. But. Otherwise, I, I, the, the use doesn't bother me. Uh, I, I do think if we got to the farm part, then um, I think it, it probably does fit as agriculture has been proposed. I, th I think, unfortunately, you know, we don't, we've only got Richard, but I, some people would take advantage of that and and the uses keep expanding and expanding and uh, that bothers me but that's not that's something you can do really do anything about it. they're limited to what's in their application though aren't they no i thought they were limited to what was in the application I thought that's what and it's so broad that i don't know how you'd figure out what it was in there they'd be limited by the statute that says what I right heard. yeah that's what that's or what agriculture is there, ultimately Just like every Probably other be. farmer you pick or agritourism operation. But I don't know how much Richard wants to or does act as a policeman. I mean, that's that's not really the role. That for you, Richard. Yeah, that's what I need. <laughs> no, that the it would it would probably take someone other than the zoning inspector to object. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. Convince me that it's commercial. The three. Of well, I like Steve's analogy, and they're paying taxes on their products. That's commercial to me. Not, not required by code to be commercial. It's a farm by definition. It's all you need. That's not the case. Yeah, the farm uses the. Uh, we can, we just went through that. An or the question, it's not there's no commercial required. Sorry, Sorry. 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 Hold on. That's not the case. Agritour the definition of agritourism references agricultural production, and the definition of agricultural production is means commercial 
and then it goes into aquaculture, algaculture, apiculture, animal husbandry. That's where they're getting, I just want to explain, that's where they're getting the word commercial. Is that connected to the $2,500 in the definition? It's a separate section. It's 929.01A. Do that. Ca casual sales are like selling chicken and made with cash. And they get five bucks for it. They're invoicing <laughs> for it, they're collecting the money, they're paying taxes on it under a business structure. How, what is not commercial? I don't think it's considered, it would be considered a commercial or an active business. To sell one chicken, whether you pay the sales tax on it or not. Well, the Supreme Court case says if you sell a single bottle of wine, and I understand the wine, Richard, but if you sell a single bottle of wine, that is the name. And, and that's and, got and a whole different is. exemption. But I'm not speaking to commercial activity. Yeah. So, yeah. Single bottle of wine. Five chickens from Helen's farm last year. But many of you, and you went there and visited her children. Okay. How many tickets did I sell? Okay. We're going to close. Based on questions and testimony you've heard so far, certainly if the board wants to take additional feedback, you absolutely might. And if the applicants want to provide additional feedback. I'd like to close the meeting. I've heard enough testimony. Mm -hmm. And um, does somebody want to make a motion? I move that we accept this as agritourism. That's all it takes, right? I move that we overturn Richard's yeah. uh, ruling, uh, officer's office ruling, um, to, uh, and on a finding that the use finding that as presented constitutes by reverse. Yes, constitute that it constitutes a productive farm. That no, you don't have to say that. You just have to say that it qualifies. Okay. As <laughs> yes, and I'm saying exactly that. Is that good for you? I second that motion. So they don't have to reapply. It's the application. They yeah, still need to exactly. get a permit. Okay, they have to they have to do the ingress and egress and the parking and the you know, whatever. But there's there's no reason to deny the it's just like the, the code says you can build a house, but you can still have to meet the setback requirement. Right. So you're saying the code says that this is agritourism, but they still have to meet the, the requirements that are in the code, the specific requirements. So what the code doesn't make completely clear to all of us is what constitutes agritourism. Okay. So, second and second. <laughs> All those in favor? Uh, I think we have a roll call. Oh. Okay, just a second. I need to hear the motion. So I okay, the motion is to overturn the decision of the zoning inspector and to determine that the use as presented or as, as, as presented constitutes agritourism. Thank you. Just a second. Well, you last. Maybe you can wait. I have to call that. It's called it. What I've, what I've written down is the move to overturn the ruling of the zoning inspector and rule that the application meets the standards of agritourism. Application as presented yeah. meets the standards of agritourism. Okay. Application as presented. Eli moves and Richard seconds. Right. Okay, so we're ready for a vote? Yes. Okay. Um, Eli? Yes. Amy? Yes. David? Based on the five chicken testimony, I say yes. <laughs> Richard? Yes. <laughs> Thank you.
We got one more thing to hear, you guys. It'll be real interesting. But we're going to take a break. Every time you bring my So I don't know what you got to do to do that. Richard Soho can re reopen this meeting. Yeah. At 9.15, more or less. Is it really 9.15? Yes. Yes. And I can, I'll just say that I have to recuse myself from the second hearing, so I'm going to go have dinner. Yeah. <laughs> well, then, then, then I, I at least want to say that you're going to hear part of what I was going to say, which was to thank the New Hearts for their gracious <laughs> allowance. You're to, welcome. It's Sharon's art project. <laughs> <laughs> Don't say that because that doesn't become agricultural use. <laughs> I, I have summarized or, or verbalized whatever you want to say the application, which was on a multiple sheets of paper, which each of you have. The Yellow Springs Chamber of Commerce, on behalf of Sharon and David Newhart, are applying for a temporary use permit under Section 18.52 of the Miami Township Zoning Resolution. They would like permission to sell bottled water and one style of affordable t-shirt at the Sunflower Field at 4625 U.S. 68 North um, on two weekends, okay? The weekend of 22, 23, 24 September and the weekend of 29, 30 September, 1 October. Those are Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And on Friday from 4 p 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. and on Saturday and Sunday from 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. They have also asked for some undefined flexibility based on the time of actual blooming. So I, you may want to ask them to clarify, does that mean they won't use all these dates or that they will want other dates? The purpose of the sales is to underwrite the cost of hiring off-duty Greene County deputies to provide traffic control. The water and teas will be sold from a 10 by 10 pop-up tent located at the northwest corner of the field. Parking will be in the field adjacent to the sunflower field to the north. I think that's the relevant information. Uh, and if you get rained out an entire weekend, are you then asking to push it to the next weekend? No. No? The next weekend is, uh, is street fair, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No. Please don't. I mean, Say anything about street. It really is, isn't it? This is not a street. Second Saturday. Is this Second Saturday of October. Yes. Yeah. Uh, no. Can you um, state your name? Please. I am Sarah Courtright, and I'm on the board of the Chamber of Commerce, Yellow Springs Chamber. No, the flexibility that we mentioned in the in the application uh, is based on the when they germinate and when they bloom. The sunflowers. Now we already had to do go back and do. Well, I shouldn't say we. The New Hearts did a second planting because the first planting didn't germinate. So we already have shifted. But the dates that we are anticipating are the ones on the permit. Um, after two weeks, they pretty much are done for. So those two weekends we are anticipating, and I think that the latest report from the field is that they will be ballooming on the 22nd, that first weekend and the second weekend. And so that's what we're aiming for. But that's why we, you know, wrote in a little flexibility. So between the time you wrote this and today, we really could sort of take out the, the undefined flexibility because you don't need it anymore. Well, yeah, I mean, I think we're, I think we're good. Um, and it's to the point now that we have um, scheduled deputies volunteers so we really don't want to change it up now of course that is all dependent on your ruling but we have to move ahead on the whole thing so yeah uh what else i i was the one that submitted the application but mark is our president president of the chamber so we're both speaking i just want to point out one irony and that's that a year and a half ago i stood here before you on a different subject and I made the point that I know that know for a fact that I'm going to come back here and have to ask you for um, permission to do things at the Sunflower Field, and I've been assured by the four of you to not on at that point. 
um, that that was not the case and we would not be required to do that because it was already established as an agritourism as an agritourism agritourism um, activity. It, it was never permitted. Uh, perhaps not, but the land trust has uh, been responsible for the, or they assumed responsibility, working with new arts, and sold t-shirts and bottled water and so forth for, I couldn't tell you how many years, but a number of years. So it may not have been codified, but it was certainly an activity that went on, and, and we are not suggesting that we're doing anything different at the field other than just assuming responsibility from the land trust and operating just exactly the way and the only reason that I made this statement about it being an established agritourism activity was because we have even inherited all of the signage that calls out or ORC in protecting us from any um, civil liability for any injury of that of that type um, based on the agritourism laws. So there's precedent, whether we whether it was ever permitted or not, and we were not aware of yes or no. Um, there's been precedent of over a decade of this happening. Mm -hmm. So are you selling just the one style of t-shirt? Um, at the, the that is correct. At the field, we're selling one style of t-shirt, but the, the uh, we extended the offer to um, local um, vendors in town, different shops. But we actually have four fit four styles of t-shirts that will be sold throughout the town for different people's tastes. This is the one we're going to be selling at the at the Sunflower Field. But we'd like to sell to support the cost of we, last, last year our cost, just to give you an idea, last year our cost for the sunflower field, and again, not including the planting or anything like that, was over $9,000, and the sheriff's deputies increased their their fees by 33% uh, this year. So we want to make it sustainable. We want it to make, we want to make it safe, which is why we have to pay for the deputies to be there. Um, and if we didn't, honestly, we would, we would advise the new arts to plow it under because it would become a uh, safety hazard. So it doesn't make money? It does not make money. That's the point. We're trying to... Um, no. With the t-shirts? With the t-shirts. With the t-shirts, yeah. we're hoping to at least break it in. It's, the deputies are going to be $6,300. Um, there will be some other expenses that we incur. incur. <coughs> but... It, it, it's unsafe without official uh, security. Um, and, have, and helping to manage the, the points of ingress and egress that, that are defined by the, uh, by the township. Yeah. The, the field has been planted for many years, but its popularity as a destination has as, as a logarithmic curve. Yes, We're it talking does. about 20,000 people having come last year. Wow. Mm -hmm. And you can see then the motivation wow. of the Chamber of Commerce to keep those people coming. Yeah. But it's it's getting to be a little bit of a challenge. Mm -hmm. And the land trust found that their volunteers didn't command the same, the needed respect that the deputies do to make sure that people don't do things foolish mm -hmm. in terms of traffic and cars. The other thing is, I'm uncomfortable putting volunteers in the middle of a state route mm -hmm. and pointing this way and that way and, no, you can't, you have to turn right out of the field and stuff. I don't, I don't feel good about that either. So plenty of people in uniform who actually are trained to do that kind of thing, it's a lot safer. So, so as, a, as, as a point of clarification, um, we did not go to to come to land trust and say we'd like to take this over. They came to us and asked us to do it because we have experience running events, which is, as was pointed out, this has become. Mm -hmm. um, many of you know that I used to own a shop downtown Yellow Springs, and we get pe we would get people every year, beginning in May. Where's the sunflower field? Mm -hmm. um, it is it is a draw, um, and for that matter, because we can actually officiate it in some ways. There are a lot of other sunflower fields around mm -hmm. the township that don't get that traffic. Um, I know the one year that the uh, Tecumseh Land Trust decided not to do it and the chamber declined. Um, I know that, the, that there was a lot of uh, 
traffic out on uh, Enid. Enid and Jackson. Yeah, right there at, at uh, There are two fields blooming right now. Mm -hmm. Right. But they'll come here seeking them out. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm totally in favor of this temporary use, but I'm just one so selling t shirts is going to cover the $9,000 for that. No. It has in the past. It has? Mm -hmm. right. T shirts and water. T shirts, t -shirts and water, and donations. Yeah. Yeah, and we do, we have uh, jars or cans or whatever out mm -hmm. for donations, mm -hmm. and people generally are pretty generous with the donations. So, yeah. Well, I think it's a great idea to have the sheriffs out there. I was asked to be a volunteer, so I didn't like part of that. <laughs> and, and part of their job, and, and I'm happy to report because I was um, at the township meeting following the South Park Field last year, um, that in previous years they've had people in the cemetery parking on graves on the other side oh, yeah. of the mm -hmm. road, the, the, new, the new cemetery, yeah. and that did not happen last year. Mm -hmm. I, I move that we accept this uh, temporary waiver, temporary permit. We authorize. We, I, I move that we authorize this temporary permit. I second that. No, I second okay. that. <laughs> Any further discussion? No. no. Okay. Um, Amy. Yes. Eli. Yes. Richard. Yes. I told you we Thank you all Thank so you very much. much. Thank, Thank you. Come to the spring, the sunflowers.